the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a linguist. no idea. <laughs> I, love I didn't that. know you were a nerd, but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now. 267 22 Jiggy. Daddy, hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? It reminds me of that uh, <laughs> David Bowie song. Jiggy Blake Guitar Jeff. It's a great name, and thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and uh, you know you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my tricks up there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Well, apparently today is not what I wanted to start the show out with. However, welcome to the world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio Program, coast to coast and border to border on TuneIn, iTunes, Radio Loyalty, Stitcher, and of course, the brand new Cheeky Jaguar app available in the App Store, JiggyJaguar.us. You can stream the show live, 24-7 replay, exclusive news and programming information all available on our fantastic app. Selected editions on iHeartRadio and AMFM247.com and 50 plus AMFM stations. Across the Fruited Plain, the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Broadcast is live on the air, and apparently, <laughs> we have caused some trouble. So, I now have to take a moment to lay out everything you know how there's magicians in the world. And magicians, you know, they pull the rabbit out of the hat. Pull it right out of the hat. And people are like, oh my God, how did he get that rabbit out of that hat? There used to be a show years ago on Fox. I think that's what it was. Fox, Fox, uh, the, the Fox Broadcast Network, as Bill O'Reilly would call it. The Fox Broadcast Network, and they did, uh, it was, uh, they revealed magician secrets. They had a guy in a cool mask, and they revealed secrets of magicians. Someone will, someone will look it up and send me a tweet or a Facebook message on it. But uh, that's what I'm attempting to do right now. That's what I'm going to do right now in front of God and everybody, because apparently no one seems to get it <laughs> nobody seems to get it not the xwe guys not their ring announcer not the uh quote-unquote competition not anybody not even blade so i have to go through now and i have to explain every single moment of this okay in radio, they have these things called radio wars, where one radio host will talk crap on another, and then the other talk of crap on that person, and they'll go back and forth, and they'll trade audiences, and they'll create hype for a feud. And 90% of the time, it's all bullshit. 90% <laughs> of the time, it's all bullshit. Either one side or another got it started and then they worked out a deal and they. It's just the way it is. Nothing's ever serious. And if you've been a fan of this radio program or you've listened to this show or you've watched us on YouTube or any of the other places, you know this is all bullshit. The people that get this show get this show. The people that don't get this show will never have a clue about it. Well, I've stepped in it again. <laughs> I tried to create something that apparently a bunch of people who are very simple-minded and who are very sensitive could not understand. And that is this situation with Blade from XWE and myself. So I am now going to have to go through and explain every single thing about this and ruin what potentially could have been a really cool angle. So let's start back um, in September. It was during the Kansas State Fair. Um, I happened to see a post on 
this guy by the name of Blade who works for XWE. And he's the trainer also over there. And he posted something on Facebook about how he was on a poster with two other guys and he didn't deserve to be because they were broken down hacks and all this stuff. So I jumped in and I said, well, I said, and I looked at all these marks who had went in and made different comments and uh, somebody made a comment about, you know, I'm going to kick your ass, burr, and all this stuff. And he would go respond to them back and forth in character as Blade. And I thought, this is a cool idea. So I'm going to get something started here. And I was in the process of, of, of training, and I'm still training, for the, bo- the, for the boxing match in November. Uh, in fact, last evening, I just got back from Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we went down, and I worked out with Andy Zerger yesterday, the guy who uh, trains with David Rickles. Uh, and uh, David Rickles, of course, is from Bellator. And I thought, you know, this is really cool, and, and we need to get something going here. So instead of doing what I, sh- I guess what I should have done, which was message the guy, introduce myself, explain to him every single thing I wanted to do, and then bring everybody else in on it, so it has the potential to leak out... Let me give you a good example. I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. I've been a professional wrestling fan since I saw Ultimate Warrior take on Hulk Hogan on a Coliseum video at WrestleMania 6. I know how this works. Surprises in professional wrestling do not work. They only work when only a finite amount of people know about them. When you start telling everybody, it leaks out, and it's no longer a shock. It's no longer a surprise. It's just a stupid angle. So I decided I went in, and I made a nasty comment about this Blade guy. And and, and what has been the stigma for XWE in Salina, Kansas, is that they are all untrained guys. And how this started was uh, two of their guys, two or three of their guys, attended a Brian Knobs seminar put on by Lance Chafin, the Midwest Mangala, uh, four or five years ago, which I helped put together, helped put that together. How the hell's my phone? We're doing this live, by the way, kids, so phones are going to get, people are going to be pissed, you know, it's way things are. So we put together this, this camp, Brian Knobs, Lance, me, we, we put the whole thing together. Well, these three guys that were local professional wrestling fans that wanted to get into the business showed up for the seminar. They couldn't make it through the whole seminar. They left halfway through. Well, several months later, they started a professional wrestling company called XWE. Now, they held shows in in people's backyards, and they had production values, and they had a trampoline, and all stuff. It was really cool. It was a cool deal. And to watch it from where it started to where it is now is amazing. So they all got together. They had this event. And they they, they put all this stuff together. Well, okay, also along the way, um, they had, I guess, they had, a, they had a disagreement with a guy by the name of Derek Ellis who was part of this this XWE, went on to have this RWE. Okay, this uh, professional wrestling wars and, and all that stuff, and, and every, the thing I never understand about professional wrestling wars is that you guys are all in the same business, but no one can ever get along. It's the strangest thing in the world. You had to have Kenny Zombie Jones come along. <laughs> And work an angle to get you guys to get together. So, but none of that, none of that aside. Back to this blade thing. Okay, I get a hold of Blade. I mess. I, 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 I made a nasty comment on his Facebook. He gets back with me. Well, while this is happening, 
And I'm going to, and what, what they call it when they, when you, when you tell the truth and you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth in professional wrestling, it's called a shoot. So I'm going to shoot right now on Blade. Blade reaches out to Kenny Zombie Jones, one of my best friends, and tells him, this jiggy guy has got a hold of me, blah, 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 blah. He's talking crap on me, saying that we're all untrained. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And he gets his feelings hurt. Kenny gets a hold of me. I explained to him what's going on. He said, oh, I think this is genius. This is going to lead to a match, isn't it? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, and, and, and you'll be able to, you know, we'll film it. And I'll, I'll, I'll teach you, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll turn this into a whole thing. So, okay, already zombies in on it. So I've already told one person too many. I'm surprised it didn't leak out. I'm surprised zombie didn't call somebody so excited that it leaked out. So we continue on down the line. Okay, I continue to talk crap on Blade. At one point, I told him, I said, hey, I challenge you to come on the radio show. And then he accepts it. And we put up a video about that. And then, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Then, we go on. And we put together this, um, I, 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 I get a hold of Chris the Voice, who is their ring announcer. And I explain to him a little bit of what's going on. I said, you know, we're trying to work this angle with Blade, blah, blah, blah. I sent him a message, you know, we're going to try to see what we can do, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we go to the uh, Taz wrestling event in uh, Hoisington, Kansas. Blade is there. I think I'm getting a call. Oh, we'll talk to them later. We'll talk to them later. So, I I get a call from... Uh, we, we go to the event. We go to Hoisington, Kansas. I, I bump into the guy, the Blade guy. He doesn't have his gimmick on. He comes around and he shakes everybody's hands. And he has to know who I am. But he doesn't say anything. So, he doesn't say anything to me. So, I just think, okay, well, it's not a big deal. Okay, he goes on, he wrestles that night. Okay, during the play-by-play, -play, I did play-by-play -play with John Mosier, who's been in the business forever. He knows all these guys. I start making fun of Blade and mocking him because I'm continuing the angle. John then it fills me in on who this Blade guy is. Okay, Zombie's already told me who the Blade guy is. So I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty cool. He's an actual professional wrestler. He's got, you know, background in the business, all this stuff. He's helping these guys get better. He's training them. Okay. Well, then I reach out. After Zombie tells me, hey, I want you to come in and film my match at XWE, you've got to reach out and talk to the guy that runs XWE, this Nathan guy, who was the original guy who was at the Lance Chafin seminar who didn't make it all the way through and then created this XWE thing. So I talked to Nathan on text message, and we go back and forth, and finally we work things out. Okay, then... Uh, Derek Ellis gets a hold of me at one point, and he's like, you know, you're, you're talking crap on this Blade guy. You can't be doing this. I'm trying to work an angle with him. Trying to work an angle with him! He tells me this, which is what I'm trying to do right here. <laughs> okay, so I tell him, hey, it's not a big deal. I just wanted to get him on the radio show, blah, 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 blah. So I reach out to Blade. Now, I, I tell Nathan on text message that we're going <laughs> to be, that, that I'm going to try to get some of the guys to come on a week before and get him some PR on the radio show. Okay. So then uh, I reach out to Blade on a private message on Facebook. And also, Kenny was on this show at one point couple weeks ago and said, I'll pass your number along to Blade and I'm going to give you a call. I've never heard anything out of Blade. I sent Blade a message. I said, hey, I said, we need to get this figured out because 
we got this radio show coming up that, you know, you're going to be on, and we need to get, you know, things figured out. So he never gets back with me. He then posts on Facebook and blows up my private message and says, well, you know, uh, you get a hold of me and trying to work things out. Well, why don't you work it out since you challenged me? I'm like, oh, my God. You're not getting this, are you? Well, then today, <laughs> Derek gets a hold of me, is mad as hell that we're working this angle with XWE. Okay, now I've also talked to this Chris the Voice guy at one point, and he was like, I'll come down next Sunday, I'll bring some of the wrestlers, which is one of the reasons why we did the video last Sunday about, hey, we're going to have some of the wrestlers in. Because the original thing was that Blade was going to show up to the show. And he was either going to come through the open door policy and he was going to be like, you know, show up on the couch and we'd have this big brouhaha, which would lead to him going, well, if you're such a tough guy, let's have a match. And then I would say, okay, I think you're an untrained hack, blah, 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 blah. Let's have the match. And then we would have the match down the line. And then what he would do is he would obliterate me. You know, I'd do the job in the middle of the ring. He'd hit me with, you know, whatever his finishing move is. And bam, it'd be over. And then I would come on the radio and I'd be like, yep, those guys are real. Those guys are tough, blah. Well, then when I couldn't get Blade to get back with me, I got a hold of Chris the Voice, and I said, here's what we're going to do. I said, this guy won't get in touch with me. Zombie even offered to come down and moderate and be part of the show, and I figured then we'd have a big pull-apart brouhaha. Didn't happen. So, What's now happened, by the way, the person that keeps calling in has nothing to do with this conversation. That's why I've not put them into the mix. So then, I thought, well, here's what we'll do. We'll have the X, I, I, I got a hold of the Chris, Chris the Voice, and I said, hey, who's Blade's opponent at the XWE show? Because I figured it was probably a local guy. Probably somebody they're training. So I figured we'd have that guy on and then him and I would be talking smack on Blade and then Blade could walk in and be like, oh my God, he's here to confront both of us. Well, that didn't work. So now within the span of four hours, because this shit started at noon. <laughs> now what's happened is that Blade doesn't have a clue what the hell's going on when he's in the world of professional wrestling where they do shoots, they do works, they do angles. Derek is mad, which... <laughs> and then Zombie doesn't know what to do because Zombie's out here going, well, I thought it was an angle. I thought these guys were smart enough to know it was going to be an angle. He didn't say that. I said that to him. And now Chris, the voice, has been like, well, I don't think we, we're going to come down now because all the stuff that's been said. <laughs> so what's happened now is that a, a fake pro wrestling angle has turned into a fake pro wrestling shoot angle where everybody who's involved in this is all sensitive and has their feelings hurt over something that was crafted to be a professional wrestling angle. This is the craziest thing in the world. I, I just, I don't even know what to say anymore about this. So, I guess since, since Blade couldn't play along, and the XWE guys couldn't play along, and now the RWE guys are all mad. 
I guess I'll just go on about my day. <laughs> and that'll be the end of that. So that is that. <laughs> we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we will try to do something to where we don't hurt anyone's feelings. <laughs> I just I, I just don't understand this stuff. I have conversations with people in the professional wrestling business, people that are not indie wrestlers, people that are... Because we, we've had people on this show that I know personally. Shane Douglas, Rhino, uh, Matt Hardy, although I, don't, I haven't talked to Matt Hardy in months. He broke it and all. I have, you know, guys like Lance Chafin that I talked to, Adam Pena, Mike Clares, guys who are who are either in the pro wrestling business or they're on the out, outskirts of pro wrestling. I just... It was a cool idea, but I guess we're not doing it now. And I've spoiled it now. So we're not going to do it, period. Because nobody could figure this out. So we're going to move on down the road. And uh, <laughs> we've got more coming up here on the World Famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. 